speaker is none other than B.K. Naik, excellent teacher. He deserved to be the president of AIS. He just missed by a, a small margin, but uh, we ex expect to listen to him for because he's bringing this glaucoma along with cataract, so that will be a good lecture. Congratulations for number of votes you got, Nayak. You okay. nearly won. Thank, thank you, you sir. <laughs> good afternoon, friends. I'm going to talk just the basic principle I'm going to talk about in the six minutes, the thought process that should go to your mind so that whenever you encounter a patient with cataract, with glaucoma, then how to tackle that. Now, this, we know that both diseases are mainly the disease of old age and the incidence of prevalence is increasing because of the advancing age. The cataract uh, treatment is, you can say that almost it has reached the pinnacle, almost. I don't say that it is the final, but almost. But same success cannot be said about the glaucoma surgery. Now, patient needs to understand that we, they are dealing with, we are dealing with two separate conditions. So, for that, there has to be some deviation in our thinking process whenever it's coexisting. Now, certain pre-evaluation, uh, pre-operative evaluation which is needed, mainly the degree of cataract and severity of glaucoma, because all will affect the, your final decision. Comprehensive eye examination for cataract and glaucoma, axial length again, especially if it is very high myope or uh, high hypermetrope, the level of pre-operative intraocular pressure and the target IOP that we are aiming at. Now, also see for certain factors which will require modifications in surgical maneuvers or can lead to complications like uh, pseudo exfoliation, small tonic pupil, anterior chamber depth, and socioeconomic conditions and compliance of the patient because that probably will shift more towards the more surgery. Now, so insight in the procedure and the problems. The cataract formation after glaucoma surgery is a well known established fact. So, in AGs has shown that study has shown that about 78 percent after trabeculectomy they developed, uh, they, they, there was a formation of cataract. Now, the various uh, influence of various techniques of cataract surgery on survival of filtering blep is the other way around. That already if the uh, glaucoma surgery has been done, then after cataract surgery, whether you do ECCE or SICS or the phaco emulsification, in all situations there is uh, inflammation which is induced and because of that, there is a bleb which means it starts functioning little less or more less efficiently as it was otherwise now, otherwise without the surgery, means without the cataract surgery. Now, survival rate, it has been known that if the age was more than 50 years, the interval between true procedure is more than six months and the post-operative peak IOP was less than 25 millimeter of mercury, then survival was better. Now, the phaco emulsification after trabeculectomy, it has been in the retrospective study, it was seen that the intraocular pressure increased by 1.85 millimeter after one, uh, after one year of uh, trabeculectomy if you are doing uh, after that uh, phaco emulsification. The, in a prospective control trial, it was seen that 2.05 millimeter mercury increase in the intraocular pressure in those patients where already the trabeculectomy was done, but in the virgin eye, there was a decrease in the intraocular pressure after doing phaco emulsification. So that gives you some idea that what is the effect. Now, in cataract and glaucoma surgery, when it's combined, only the options are three. Either you do sequential, where the cataract first, or glaucoma first, or combined. So these, how to take decision about it. So there are certain variables that we should consider, type of glaucoma, severity of glaucoma, and need for, whether there is need for quick visual recovery. Now, in cataract alone, it has been seen that in primary open angle glaucoma, the intraocular pressure uh, decrease in va by various studies, 1.88 to 5.5 millimeter of mercury. In angle closure glaucoma, this was reduction was little more, 5.5 versus 6.9. Now, open angle glaucoma patients, also it has been reported that after only cataract surgery, 18 percent were without medication, which earlier they were. And in angle closure glaucoma, about 40.5 percent patients were off medications, which they were earlier using this. And in pseudo exfoliation, cataract alone brings down intraocular pressure little more. Now, glaucoma surgery, if we are doing glaucoma surgery, IOP control is the best out of all three options. The trap followed by cataract, bleb function decreases, which I told you, age less than 50 years, the, the, these are the risk factors. Intraocular pressure rise, a spike more than 10 millimeter, and surgery gap is less than six months. And of course, the risk, the risk of endophthalmitis also doubles. In combined surgery, intraocular pressure control is definitely better than cataract alone. But post-op IOP spikes are also less, but IOP control is less than trap alone. So there's 
three grades, means the only trap, the best control, and uh, next is the, a little less is control if it is uh, followed by uh, trap, and only the cataract surgery, that is the least. Now cataract, now, the finally, the final question which I am going to answer, that oh, cataract surgery alone, when you will choose this? In ocular hypertensive, or I do that, in, in ocular hypertensives, IOPA target with just single or two drugs, visual field damage is mild, cataract surgery alone lowers pressure in 2-3 millimeter mercury in for 1-5 to five years. But the effect of cataract surgery greatest in eyes with pseudo exfoliation, but don't forget to keep a patient on regular follow-up. Don't think that patient has been cured now. So that is the important thing you should keep in mind. Now when glaucoma surgery alone, advanced glaucoma with advanced field damage, IOP uncontrolled with maximal medical therapy and trabeculoplasty, uveitic glaucoma and neovascular glaucoma. And for combined, my indications will be IOP at or above target with multiple drugs. Visual field damage moderate. Patient cannot tolerate medical therapy, distant geographical location of the patient, non-compliant patient and economically compromised patients and general health does not permit two OT visits. And uh, this is the approach which is just summarized in this chart. So if just you have to assess this, IOP at target, single drug, probably you will do this. If it is above target with multiple drugs, then it's combined and IOP uncontrolled with maximal tre tre uh, treatment and the advanced damage, then you will choose first trabeculectomy then. Only difference, the last slide, only difference that in SICS where you are going to differ because SIC, SICS you are also disturbing conjunctiva. So just two, three deviation I will suggest, try not to disturb conjunctiva during manual SICS. Therefore preferable it, if you do it with temporal incision, at least the superior conjunctiva is undisturbed. And in case of manual SICS, probably you have to opt little more towards combined surgery means you have to choose more often combined surgery rather than only cataract surgery so that you will think whatever is the pressure based on that I'll take decision later on so that you have to uh, opt more for this. The surgery purposely I have not shown because it's just simple combination. Time was short so I just stop over there. Thank you.